Hello and welcome to Common Ground, an inside look at Suffolk County. I'm your host, Sheriff Steve Tompkins. So now we're almost now we're at the middle of the 12 candidates uh, that's running for mayor, mayor of the city of Boston. And today we begin our show with city councilor Mike Ross. And you all know Mike. Mike is a strong advocate for all things that's pretty righteous and pretty true. And he's going to talk to us today about the burning important issues that's important to you. And he's going to tell you why uh, you should consider giving him your vote to be the next mayor of Boston. And then on the flip side, we're going to do a pre-recorded program with House Speaker DeLeo. So without any further ado, sir. Thank sure. you so much for coming Great on. To see you. Really Glad appreciate to be it. Here. Thanks yeah. for having me. Oh, no problem. Listen, let's start with uh, education. You know, uh, most folks want to talk about what they're going to do with their kids, what they're going to do with the charter schools versus the public schools. Where do you come down on education? Yeah, I mean, education is the great equalizer here in the city of Boston, where education was founded. And we have a duty to make sure that uh, we are giving opportunities to our kids. Um, so what I've been talking about with education is early education, right? We know that we have an achievement gap problem in our city. We know that uh, different people are learning at different rates and that there's a gap between communities of color and white kids who are in the schools and that that gap isn't closing. The best way to close, it's closing, but not closing the extent we need it to. The best way to close that gap is through early education. Um, you know, early education opportunities need to be available first in the schools that need it most, the schools that are failing, the schools that are you know, left behind, uh, the schools in the tier three and tier four category. Uh, so I think that's essential. But the other thing we need in our schools are the, the things that you and I enjoy, that, you know, and things that, you know, we all look for. Uh, it, so it's, it's to, to do that, to fit that in our schools, we have to extend the day. We have one of the shortest school days in America, in urban America, and we have to extend that. And it's not so that we can add 10 minutes of science or math. We won't revolutionize our schools if we go an extra 10 minutes in science or math. But if we add art and music and gym and physical education and dance and computer science, that's what we're talking about. That's what I'm talking about. So to extend the day by two hours for those electives, you know, that's essential. And, and, and finally, in terms of the broad brush areas, we need a technical vocational school that's second to none. You know, if you go to Worcester and if your car breaks down in Worcester, you can bring your car to Worcester Tech High School and kids under the leadership of you know, uh, mechanics will fix your car. If you want a haircut, you can go to Worcester Tech High School. If you, if you have a pet, uh, a cat or a dog uh, that needs to see a veterinarian, you can bring your cat, dog to Worcester Tech High and under the leadership of Tufts Veterinarian School, there's kids learning to become veterinarians that will take care of your, your cat dog. And seniors are going there as well. This is happening in Worcester. It's happening in Brockton. It's happening in, in the Cape Cod. It's not happening here in Boston. It's not happening here at Madison Park High School. And we have to make it happen here. We have to support the new, the new headmaster who is coming to Madison Park High School. And we have to make that happen at, at that tech high school. There are too many kids who are dropping out who don't see the Boston Public Schools as a pathway to them. We have to change that. We have to create this magnet, our tech folk school, uh, to bring those kids in. So let me ask you about that and a couple of points that you touched on. When you talk about the longer school day, when you talk about um, adding the uh, different subjects to the curriculum, art, music, PE, so on and so forth, talk to me about how you work with the Boston Teachers Union to get them to get on the same page of music with you, no pun intended, so that these things can be accomplished. You know, the, the, We'll have to do some work in that area, but it's not the impossible work that you're hearing some of the other candidates talk about. The Boston Teachers Union, and you know, look, I don't expect to get their endorsement. I mean, my first, the first words out of my mouth in, in, their, in that meeting was, we're going to get an extended day, and none of us are going to get out of the room until we get it done. There are a couple gasps in the room. But listen, I'd love to get their endorsement. I just don't see it happening necessarily, right? right. But if I do, uh, great. But we have to work with them. They are the teachers union, and they represent the teachers, and they're at the table. They're already doing extended day at several of our schools, yeah. and the reality is it's at the Edwards. If they don't want, if their teachers don't want to, they don't have to. So it's happening to some extent already. We'll have to do that starting again with the schools that need it most, the schools that are most, you know, unchosen. Mm -hmm. Those have to be the schools that we fix because it's not fair and it's not right to tell some parents that they can go to a great school and that, by definition, the, the other parents have to send their kids to not such a great school. That doesn't work. Until all of our schools are great, 
we won't be able to say that you can go to, the, to that grade school and they can't go to, you know, that they have to go to bad school. So to do that, to fix that, we start with the schools that are most broken. And then we expand from there to eventually getting to the place where almost all of our schools have early education, to most all of our schools have extended day. And, you know, we'll have to get it done. It's, How the do you pay it's for one of the most important things. So the way I'm going to pay for a lot of these things is going to be through new growth. We have to grow our city. There are neighborhoods in our city that, you know, in about two, three, four hours, there's nowhere to go and there's nothing to do and it's time to stay in for the rest of the night. That's unacceptable. I believe that, you know, people want places to go, places to gather, and places. I represent the Fenway. Fenway, 13 years ago, was gas station, parking lot, fast food restaurant. Mm -hmm. Today, it's 2 million square feet of development, $2 billion invested in that area. It's restaurants, it's places to go, it's Fenway Community Health Center. It's some on-site affordability. And on that point, let me just say, it's not enough. And I have an affordable housing plan I want to talk to you about how it would be different under my uh, mayoralty. But it, it is some on-site affordability. My vision for the rest of the city is to plan and grow you know, with the community other neighborhoods and create housing, create more affordable housing, create places for people to go. It's not fair, it's not right that some neighborhoods, you know, instead of a community serving bank that invests in people and invests in the community, there's a check cashing place. Mm -hmm. Or instead of a supermarket, you're left with a food desert. Or instead of a restaurant where you can work or you can gather or you can bring your family to enjoy a, a great night out, you have to go to another neighborhood because there is none in your in your neighborhood. So just to be so honest, when you build, when I'm sorry, I'm just, no, when you grow this city, when right. you build this city, you're going to create new growth. You're going to create new tax revenue. You're going to create new opportunities and new money bringing it, coming into the city's coffers. It's in our interest to grow, but it's also in neighborhoods' interest to grow as well. And thereby, recycling that money back into education, putting that money back into schools to grow schools to to grow the schools the way you're talking about. That's right. Using that new growth which is really the heart of our budget, right? Because we're all governed in, 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 in Massachusetts by Proposition 2.5. So Boston can only grow by 2.5% of our tax levy. The other proportion, the other is all new growth. I will use the new growth to invest in technical vocational high school, to invest in early education, starting with our schools that need it most, and to invest in a longer school day that's filled with electives like computer science, art, music, and dance, and those are the things that I believe will help right side our school system and make it the place where the remaining elements will come into place to make it the greatest school system, bar none, for urban education in America. I'm going to segue to public safety, but before I go there, I want to ask you one last question about education, and that is, what are the qualities that you would be looking for in your uh, school um, superintendent, school commissioner? The superintendent will have to be collaborative, will have to work with the, the, um, the teachers union, will have to work with the administration, but will have to work with the community. We'll have to believe that the success of our school system relies in a real honest dialogue with our parents and our school community, a real dialogue. And that superintendent will have to be the very best available to us in the country. <coughs> Excuse me. We have an opportunity to find the best superintendent in America and bring her or him to Boston and and you know someone who can manage a billion dollar enterprise but someone who's also an educator someone who understands urban education and someone who believes in collaboration and working with other people talk to me about public safety where do you stand on public safety and particularly talk to me about public safety in the inner core in the inner city the Dorchesters of Roxbury the Mattapans and in South Boston East Boston yeah. What's your thoughts on that? Just this Saturday, I unveiled my public safety plan uh, in uh, Roxbury, Roxbury-Dorchester border, uh, in, on Humboldt Avenue, in a place that's now known as H Block. Mm -hmm. I yep. stood in, in that community with uh, residents of that community and with supporters standing behind me, and I said to that community that we will not have succeeded as a city until this corner has succeeded in our city, so that we will not have succeeded and we have not seen prosperity or the success that we're looking for until the people of this community feel safe at night. So long as one kid goes to sleep hungry or scared, we are a lesser city for it. And our measure of success is whether or not we've affected this community right here. And then I unveiled my plan. And my plan basically comes down to some simple concepts. That the opposite of violence is opportunity. It's not peace, it's opportunity. And through opportunity, uh, especially with youth violence, all right, 
getting young people involved and diverted to positive uses, whether that's through education, through technical vocational high school, through job training, through youth engagement, through street safe program, through our city worker program, that that will be how we engage our youth. That what's happening in our city right now, our kids are gathered, they're sitting around, they're not doing anything, they are getting into um, fights with a similar set of kids in another neighborhood. We're calling them gangs. If you ask them if they're gangs, they probably would say, we're not a gang, <laughs> we're just hanging out in the neighborhood and they're getting themselves into trouble. We have to interrupt that with violence. We can't afford not to. The question isn't how do we afford to pay for it, the question is what does it cost for us not to? And I believe that the fact that what we are just talking about, that some of those neighborhoods, by five or six o'clock there's nowhere to go, nowhere to gather, that that's affecting that as well. So in Dorchester, Roxbury, Mattapan, we need opportunity. We need places to go and places to gather. We need youth serving agencies. We need street workers in places where there aren't today. We need, uh, you know, we need to basically engage those young people. That day that I went out to so-called H Block, I brought with me uh, George Foreman, the son, who was opening up a gym in, uh, in, in Boston, in the Four Point Channel. It's George Foreman's son. He's a mm -hmm. boxer, too. Mm -hmm. And he brought his pads and his boxing gloves, and kids came out from everywhere. And that community, for that one day, said, you know what, it's kind of back to where we were. It goes, we need more of that. How do you get rid of unsafe places? It's not police. Police are a part of it. But it's you and me. You have a park that no one wants to go to, you and I will make it safer. Mm -hmm. You have a neighborhood that no one wants to walk around in at night, bring nighttime activities, bring you know an ice cream shop that people can go to until around. In, in Mission Hill, where I live, right? JP Lakes is open until 10 o'clock at night, or maybe even 11. You know, at, at 10 o'clock, you see people walking down Mission Hill to go get their ice cream going with their family member. That's how you make places safer. You create uses and, and you places where you and I can go. I represent the Boston Common. The Boston Common, a few years back, there was a, a bullet that went lodged in Governor Patrick's window. You may remember that. I do. There was also um, some drug overdoses. I mean, it was a bad week, bad month for the Common. And the immediate reaction from a lot of people was, well, let's, let's flood this place with police. I actually argued that that was the last thing we should do. Instead, I asked my favorite question, which was, who else is doing this better than us? Mm -hmm. And let's learn from them. In this case, Paris was doing it better than us, but we couldn't, <laughs> we, couldn't afford, we couldn't afford to go to Paris. So a bunch of us hopped on a bus, and we went to New York City. We looked at Bryant Park, we looked at Madison Square Park, and we looked at Central Park. And what were they doing? They had a restaurant in one of the parks. They had you know, a library in one of the parks. They had a piano. They had just different uses. They were trying to get people into the park. We came back with what is the greatest currency that I have in my business and you have in your business. And that's a good idea and a fearlessness of implementing. Mm -hmm. And right. that's exactly what we did. You go to the Boston Common today, it's a different park. Do I think we can do that in neighborhoods? You better believe it. What would you do uh, about replacing or keeping the present police commissioner? Would you keep Ed Davis or would you switch that out? You know, this question has come up over and over in the, in the election. 